Alright guys, it's been a while since we did a tutorial that's going to be as fun as this one. It's a lot of information that I've spent probably the last four hours researching, so hopefully I can fit it into 15 minutes. I've stumbled across this amazing 3D slider called Slicebox. So here's an example of what this is. It is ridiculously cool, and you can do some so, so many things. You have so many options to do this. I mean, it's just really cool. So, I want to use this for my amateur photography. So I'm like, okay, let's do this. So I set it up, I downloaded their code off of the website, and I set it up, and it worked fine. I was able to come up with an example, like so, with my photos for my Flickr account, and it works great, and it's whatever. Now, the problem, though, is that as I was typing in all my photos from Flickr, I'm thinking, this is Flickr. I should be able to pool the data. So I hopped on over to Flickr, and uh, I tried to use their API.com slash API, right? And I tried to use their API, and I'm like, okay, to get the photos, I need to authenticate. So I had to do some authentication, I had to do some MD5 hashing, and blah, 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 blah. It was a lot of work, and I wasn't going to go through authentication just to pull from some photos. I think, hopefully I'm not violating their terms of service. Now that I think about it, I probably am. It's okay. So basically what we're doing is we're going to go to the Flickr flickr.com slash optical effects. Right, we're going to go to my Flickr account, and we are going to pull these photos via the RSS feed. Now, this is not new territory for us. We've done this before in a tutorial that I taught about Z feed. So these blog posts over here are just an RSS feed pulled in using a program called Z feed. However, for some reason, Z feed was broken for these Flickr things. So I investigated the Z feed source and came up with my own solution for parsing RSS feeds. I discovered that Z feed is actually using the Google's feed service to parse XML into JSON. So we're going to do the same thing. So this is the code. I turned it into a plugin called Slicebox Flickr. And what it does is you just simply call Slicebox Flickr, give it the RSS feed of your channel, which we can find on our Flickr photo stream at the bottom of our page. We can see it right here, this RSS icon. Ta-da! Here's our feed, everything we need. I don't have to authenticate, which is great. So here's our feed, and here's the final result. These are completely loaded in dynamically from Flickr, and we have our slice box effect. So let's get started writing this. First things first, we will delete our code and start with flash state. Now, you're looking at this, you're thinking, oh, look, there's still an image here. That's my special fallback I made just for loading sometimes takes a while. So instead of having a loading screen, what we do is we actually load in our first image. We just put that in there, everyone's going to know what their first image is, so it's no big deal. So, as a fake loading screen, while we're loading all of the images in, because Slicebox has to load all the images in, we're going to go ahead and throw in a nice uh, one image here. So this is what someone would see if, let's say, the plugin wasn't working, or let's say the photos are taking too long to load. So it still looks great, okay? So that's why we see that. Again, our HTML markup is very simple. We have a div with the ID of SB slider. We have our fake image in here at number one. And then we have our JavaScript call with opening jQuery tags. We call it on our element. We call the my custom plugin Slicebox Flickr, and we pass it the RSS feed. So let's actually write this. So here we go. We're going to start off by writing a plugin. We're going to start a function like that and go pass in jQuery. Oops. Okay, and now we're going to say uh, dollar sign dot fn dot slice box flicker equals function, pass in some options, options, open that. Now we're going to say this dot each function. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, there we go. Plugin architecture. This is how you write a jQuery plugin. You should know this uh, like the front and back of your hand. Done. Okay. Now, so the next thing of plugin, we need to have some options that we're going to be extending. So, var ops is our default options we're going to have, and we're going to extend those options with what the user passed in. So, ops equals dollar sign dot ex, oops, dollar sign dot extend. That's way too many spaces. Boom. Okay. Dollar sign dot extend parenthesis bracket and close the bracket, and then we will close that and pass in options. So basically this is a shortcut method. The dollar sign extend method takes two objects. It extends the one object onto the other object, meaning we're going to overwrite what the user passed in with what I'm about to define here. So I'm going to define, you know what, I'm not going to waste time on these because I want to talk about the other stuff. So these are some options that I'm passing in. How many to show, whether we're actually using that fake loader image or not, 
what the RSS feed is. And now these are just the API attributes that you use for Slicebox. You can see a whole slew of them here. These are all your options for Slicebox. So I'm passing those in here. You can do some really cool stuff by changing this information. So play with that. So here's our options. And let's actually comment this, our options. So to this point, at, at this point in the game, all we've done is created a skeleton plugin and we've added some default options. That's all we've done. Moving on. First step is we're going to be going into, we need, well, let's just say uh, reference our selector. We're going to need this, I'll explain more later, var selector equals this. All we're going to, we, we can't use the word this everywhere because jQuery does some funny stuff. So we're going to reference it with a variable so that we have the variable to use instead. So for the API, for the Flickr API, actually for the Google Feeds API, it looks uh, like this. So here is the Google Feeds API. That's what it looks like. So ajax.googlesapi.com, ajax services feed load, callback equals question mark, q equals the URL of the feed, and num equals how many to show, and then we need to output to JSON. Okay, so we need that URL, so var URL equals, and we're going to use a cool function called encode URI component, which is built into JavaScript that basically encodes it for a URL. So it takes the spaces and all those characters that you can't have, that my feed might have, and encodes them so they are okay to use in a URL. And we're going to use ops.rss. So what's happening here is ops is this extended option we have, .rss, which is the feed. Okay, then we say ops.show is already in here, right here, ops.show. So ops is the object, show is the parameter from here. Following? So now we've loaded our API. Well, we haven't loaded it, we've just de declared our API. Now we're going to use uh, jQueries.getJSON method on the API call, and we're going to get back some data. And that's that. So we're going to say console.log data. And now we're going to take a look at the data and see what we got. Console's open, refresh option is not defined. Okay, let's see what happened. Uh, it says option because it's options with an S. Options, options. Save and refresh. Okay, and we've gotten back an object. Let's take a look. Response data, okay, nothing interesting yet. Okay, feed, looking more interesting. Inside of feed we see an author, description, ah, entries, 20 entries. Let's go into entries. Here we have an array of entries, and let's take a look at our first one, and we can see that we'll have all of our stuff. So at this point, let's just create a variable that we of what we just did. So we went in the object, response data, feed, entries. Okay? So let's create a variable for that. So we're going to say uh, var feed equals data dot response data dot feed dot entries. Okay? So if we console.log, I'm sorry, let's not call it feed, let's call it entries. Console.log entries and refresh, you can see we have an array of objects, which is perfect. So now you're thinking, well, where's the image? Well, the image is actually tucked hidden away in this content variable. So they don't really make it easy for you, because again, we're kind of going around the way Flickr wants you to do this. So let's say, let's let's loop through entries. We have an array, so we're going to say, dollar sign dot each entries comma function i comma photo they're not really photos yet but so console dot log photo and let's take a look at this okay so here's all of our objects now we're looping through properly so let's take a look at that content let's go ahead and look at that content photo dot content so here's the content you can see that it goes p a tag here's a link to me optical fix posted a photo a href equals here's a link title equals there's the title of the image image source there's our image right there boom beautiful and if we take a look at the image well you know we'll look at it in a second but here's our beautiful image but it's tucked away in all this javascript what the hell so let's actually take this javascript we don't have to be scared of this problem we take this javascript we hop right over to our regex evaluator paste it in and let's write some regex we go okay well i already wrote it but uh we want to get the source so you know I'll write it again so we're going to look through this code and find the attribute src equals, and we're going to match what's inside of the quotes. So pretty simple. We're going to match src equals quote. That's the start of it. Now we need to start remembering, in parentheses, what are we remembering? We're remembering everything that's not a quote. So that needs to go in square brackets, the not sign, and then the quote sign. And now how many of these do we want? We want 
as many as I can get. Hover over, you can see that my one is my exact image source. Beautiful. Copy that. That's our source. So var source equals photo dot content dot match. Put in our regex. Now you can see that we have a problem. Our quotes, our, our syntax highlighting is off. This should tell you right away we have a problem. Our problem is that we're using double quotes. We need to be using double quotes, but they need to be escaped inside of regex. So we escape them, and we escape them, and now we have our source. So console.log source, and we can see here that we have our sources. Now this is zeroth match, which actually includes our src equals. We don't want that. We do, however, want this one, because that's the perfect one. So we will say var source equals source one. Now when we console.log source, we can see, boom, all of our beautiful sources. Let's take a look at one of these and see if this is the right image. Copy and paste. Oh, look at that. It's really tiny. Well, luckily, if we change this M to a Z, we get a beautiful big photo. Wonderful. So we're going to do a little trick. Since all these come in with that underscore M, before we match, we're going to replace the content. We're going to say replace underscore M with underscore Z. Then we're going to match. What is that going to do? That's going to be horrible. <laughs> replace with an E, not a T. There we go. Now it replaced, oops, underscore Z. I'm sorry underscore M with underscore Z. Now we take a look at it, take out one of the, oops, take out one of these images again. Now we'll take a look at it and <laughs> HTTP, sorry, there's our link. Beautiful, large image. So we solved our large small image problem. Moving on. One thing that this uh, slider has that's really cool is I can actually hit this I and it pops up some information about the photo. Well, luckily, I want the title of our image. So, as we saw when we did console.log uh, photo.content, when we did that, we got a glimpse into the fact that in the alt tag of our image, so here's our image, the alt tag actually contains the title that we want. So let's pull that out as well with regex. So almost the exact same thing. We'll just copy the exact same thing as source, except this time we'll call it title. Title, because we want the title instead. And then in this say photo.content, we don't need to replace anything this time. We just need to match. And instead of doing source equals, we're just going to say alt equals. That's it. And if we take a look at the title and refresh, there's all of our titles. Beautiful. So, so our title so that's beautiful so now what we need to do is create our image tag like so var image equals image source equals throw in our source throw in our title and this is uh, this is a, uh, I have to do this don't worry about it <laughs> just has something I needed to do I'm not gonna have time to explain it so you have to trust me on that one and then we need to append it to our selector again our selector was our main div which is, let me pop over here, that's this. So all we're going to do is start appending into here. So as we load them in, we're going to throw them into the page. So what else do we have to do? Well, that's everything that we have to do there. Um, since we're doing, since we have that fake image in the first place, we actually need to check for that. Remember I had this using first variable? We're going to check for this variable, and if we find it, we're going to remove the first image. If we didn't do this, we'd have a duplicate image. So that's why that's there. And the last thing is we need to, this is, I'm gonna, I'll let you read Slicebox yourself. This is the Slicebox call. All you do is you call Slicebox and pass it your parameters. Uh, for these, instead of these, I'll actually replace these with like ops.sliceCount instead. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm, again, running low on time. And then for an extra thing, if we are having a problem with browser capability, we can use this piece of line, line of code here for non-3D browsers like Firefox. So we save that and we refresh the page and now you can see that we are loading everything in from Flickr and it's a beautiful thing. Obviously it's changed my effect a little bit. Um, not sure why I did that. I'll fix that later. But you can see that the cool effect is taking place. So that is how you have this. I'm going to release this plugin if you guys want it. Um, it's just, it's a really cool plug in with loading images dynamically from Flickr.